he's here to talk to about pruning. Step back a little bit here. So again, I am Johnny. I own Johnny's Tree and Landscaping here in Prescott. Uh, been in business for over 15 years now. Started the company back when I was 19 years old and uh, been here for three generations in Prescott. A lot of farming, a lot of ranching in my family. So uh, big background in it. Pretty much been doing it my whole life. Um, I've been a tree climber, bucket operator, consultant, uh, licensed contractor uh, here in Prescott for, like I say, my company going 15 years now. Um, big thing about what I want to talk about today with our fruit tree pruning, being a fruit tree pruning class is you pretty much break 50% of all the rules you normally follow in pruning a basic tree. So people are continually coming to me saying, well, shouldn't you do that? Well, shouldn't you do that? I was like, well, you would if it was this, but it's not, it's this. Um, two of the primary, uh, so the two things I always remember here in Prescott, say when you're pruning a fruit tree, is it a palm fruit, is it a stone fruit? And I want to go into a few of these, and uh, if you could hand me a couple of my crops there. Sorry, this cord always inhibits me from walking around. Thank you. One, one of the apples, if you could. So this is a clipping of a tree I took yesterday. This is being a peach tree, which is a stone fruit. It just means it has a pit in the middle of it. Um, this, but this tree here, very, very, very important. Remember, it blooms, its fruit blooms on first and third year wood. That is the first place you need to ask, first question you need to ask yourself when you go to prune a fruit tree. Um, right one? Right. Uh, yeah, the apple one there is good. Um, when you go to prune a fruit tree, so understanding where is your fruit going to happen on this tree here. And don't have to identify a fruiting bud versus a leaf bud. That's another big thing. I have showed up to, oh, thank you very much. I have showed up to many, many fruit tree pro, uh, projects, and it's unfortunate, but I can't always have my hands on them for the rest of their life, and I, I deal with a lot of restoration pruning, if you will, that I have to come in and do. So stone fruit, remember, first and third year wood. That's where you're going to bear fruit on it. Palm fruit, apples, pears, they don't have pits, they have seeds inside, so they are called palm fruits. They bear fruit on second to third year wood. The reason that is so important to remember is if you look at this apple stem here, see all this new growth right here, it's dark red? That is first year's growth. It's literally 100% worthless to you. Um, there's ways to help slow that growth down, and that's why I like to prune my trees a certain way to help stop this upward growth, encourage lateral growth. Um, when I went in there to prune this tree, the gentleman who pruned it, um, he left a lot of scaffold limbs in there, I explained them, so I'm going to remove all these and start being at your tree. It was probably a 10 year old apple tree, never was properly pruned out for fruit production, um, weight, air movement, sunlight movement. So the main thing that we are going to try to do, we'll start with a palm fruit here. Um, well, if you could, yeah, yeah. If you, so say this is your tree and uh, you're trying to start your tree off in the right direction. You want structure, you want, uh, if, if you want to be able to carry fruit load. A strong angle for a fruit tree, 45, 60 degree angle. You're gonna shoot for that. You're not trying to shoot for a 90 degree angle. So we're gonna come in, look at your tree, and this is gonna be based off how old it is, um, maturity levels, um, what kind of, again, stone or palm tree. So you wanna come in and start subordinating all your middle branches again we break all the rules with fruit trees with a with a shade tree you want your central lead going to the middle that really builds structure and stability but also that tree is because of the potential of getting 60 70 feet tall we're dealing with fruit trees short fat and squatty that's how we like them an upside down umbrella is how we like them um, on this apple tree because it missed it had not been properly pruned to where it's with lateral growth it went up so you want to take these out. Very important when you start taking these back out again, you're trying to find a lateral bud that's shooting outside the tree, not into the tree. That one got broken, but if I was at your property, I'm going to take this and prune it to a lateral bud that shoots out away. We do not want interior growth on fruit trees. Why? Because when it leaves out, there's no sun, there's no light penetration in there. So it's going to breed a whole host of bacterial, fungal, small fruit, all the things that we're not uh, very fond of. So again, we're gonna take this back into a bud, and don't freak out about side lateral buds too much because that bud can be subordinated the next year, but this is a concept we're trying to teach our clients. And anyone else, even our competitors, if they wanna listen how to do this correctly, because as a tree contractor or a certified arborist, it breaks our heart to turn a tree correctly and show up the following year, and all of our work was completely destroyed. 
It takes years to do restoration pruning on these trees. Once they're destroyed, you cannot get them back. It's not a quick process. A big thing that I always hear a misconception on, what are these called in the middle of a tree when they're really small and they're just sprouting everywhere a tree? Does anyone know what these are called? Everyone calls them suckers. But they're not, but these are not called suckers. These are actually called water sprouts. And people are afraid of water sprouts. They think they're terrible. They think they're going to take nutrients from the tree. Trees are way smarter than we are. I can't reiterate that enough. It's one of the oldest biological things in the world. They do this as a defense mechanism. We create water sprouts in trees. If we did not prune trees, we would not have water sprouts. We created this as mankind because of our pruning practice, whether they be correct or improper. Storm damage is the other thing that creates these. They're called epicormic. They're deep epicormic because the tree was stressed out or was activated with growth hormones. So what we're going to do is, I don't want these ones because they're going into the tree. And for the gentleman in the back here, we hold up a little bit higher. Sorry about that. Um, we are going to subordinate these out. Why? Because they're going into the tree. So that's the only reason I don't like those water sprouts. The ones on this side, this is actually first year, second year growth wood right here. This thing can bear fruit right here. It cannot bear fruit up here. So if I want, and not to mention, if that got fruit, oops, we have it. That was sad. So we do what? We take it back to a bud that can actually bear fruit and sustain that fruit. And we actually have a nice little angle. I can start creating a good fruit bearing limb off of this, what was someone would call a water sprout or sucker sprout, but it's a water sprout. And I can structurally use that. And the next year I can create a good fruit bearing limb on this tree. Um, there was a whole bunch of cuts that were, was done on this tree. Big, big thing I want to tell people, don't be afraid to prune your fruit trees. Have fun with it. This isn't rocket science. It's basic stuff. But if you follow some of the just few basic rules, you're going to be a lot happier with yourself and the tree will too. So all of these cuts are incorrect, improper cuts. Why? Because they are not located to the branch collar of the tree. The reason that is so important and everyone fails to see the severity of the situation is there's something called meristematic cells that reside in the branch collar of trees or thing that grows. That area of systemic cells here, this uh, is meant to stop inward spread of decay and stop bacterial spongles moving in, retard the spread of decay on it. But the most, most important is the branch collar is where the tree seals itself off. If you look down at this one here, that was actually a nice little cut. We have a nice little shoulder building right there, a little donut right there, because it was brought in close enough. Very important with fruit trees to do proper cuts when you're doing your fruit trees. So I go through every tree that our company touch. No, it goes without saying. If you see a improper cut, we fix it. When we say prune trees, we mean we're to fix anything that we find wrong with that tree. We're in there, and we find these all the time. So these are kind of big cuts for such small pruners but you want to prune them into a proper collar is what you're trying to do. And not to mention, these were so close together. I mean, if I was to prune this tree, I would separate one of these and leave one and take one. Everything about that limb is nothing good about a fruit tree. So I took the whole thing out down here. People freak out, oh my God, I, no, no. It was bad, trust me, you'll take me two years. Um, so another very important thing to remember, growth hormone, oxen. This is the primary thing as pruners we are trying to control in your tree when we're coming in. Whether it be a palm fruit or a stone fruit, oxen resides in everything that grows. It is a growth hormone naturally occurring in trees, oxen, cytokinin, gibberellum. The main thing we're dealing with is oxens. It resides in your apical bud of all your trees. The reason that's so important to know, if you go to prune your tree and you're like, okay, well, I want to make it shorter and I want to get the fruit down where I want it. The biggest problem that you're doing too much heading cuts, which is this, that's your heading cut right there, is you just took oxen out of it. If you take too much oxen regulators out of the top of a tree, I do what's called, it's, it's called pissing it off. I mean, remember it, it's like, you really, literally, you'll see a tree just go like, no, 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 you took all my regulators away, so what it does, it brings oxen up from the root system and tries to put that back in the tree. So. You don't want to take out all of your buds, but on apple trees, because of, of their upward growth and their improper pruning, we get stuck with it every year. So what we're gonna to try to come do is we're always gonna to come to your property and try to V that thing out. Anything growing in, we're gonna to try to send it back out. If you, I always tell the clients, if you let me prune your trees for the next three or four years, you'll have a perfectly structured tree, and it's gonna be amazing. Very seldom, 
does it happen that we're there every year for the trees? Sometimes they skip a year. And that's detrimental for us pruners because we're like, I don't want to take more. This is very, very important. Remember, <coughs> never take more than 25 to 30% of your fruit tree. Reason being, back to that other word, oxen, growth hormones. If you upset that balance, that is what scientists and mankind has figured out. That's the happy equilibrium of keeping trees in check from not growing too fast. If you go past that, what you're going to get is a whole boatload of water sprouts. Completely worthless, non-fruit bearing, cannot use them. So what you did, you just took that tree and said, okay, I'm not getting any fruit this year. All I'll have is a whole bunch of foliage because that tree freaked out because you took over 25 and took over 30%. I try to keep my fruit trees right within the 25 to 30 percentile at my house. I come to some clients' properties though, and I'm like, yay, um, where to start? And the client wants to know that I'm doing something to help. And I'm like, okay, well, shouldn't you have taken more? I'm like, yeah, there's a lot wrong in there. I can't touch it all this year. I'll see you next year, hopefully. And that's how you start moving. It's forward progress. This isn't a rushing game. The very big misconception of a lot of people when they come to fruit trees will take more so it lasts longer. The exact opposite is true. The exact opposite. I keep going, you know, around town, you'll see a whole bunch of this all through town. Though. You'll see a whole bunch of fruit trees that are all topped off, and you'll see fruit trees that have been headed back to boom. Terrible. There is no fruiting with me on here at all. And you keep seeing it, and clients keep like, well, why didn't I get any fruit? Why this and that? It's like, well, kind of said you didn't want any. <laughs> you took it all away. I mean, what do you want me to tell you? you know? So a little bit of knowledge goes a long ways. And having fruit trees is like having kids. I say that because I have two of them. It's a lot of work. Um, some of my clients get tired of the work that goes into them. Um, but I tell people, please, don't let them become stressful. Let them become fun. I find pruning like zen. I, I find it very relaxing. Um, I donate a lot of my services to a lot of my friends and uh, so, uh, schools and stuff like that just because I do enjoy doing it. I'll just show up and I'll just do it and explain it to them. And then they, they, they give us something. So we have to continually give back. So when you're pruning, remember, try to start your trees to be a mount in the middle. Try to keep them open up, upside down umbrella. We're trying to shoot for that. Encourage side lateral growth. And this stands for palm fruit, stone fruit. Just, just, just get this conception, then you just kind of use it all the way across the board. You don't want your central lead. He's your enemy. And a shade tree, it's the, the exact opposite. We break that rule. We don't want this. We don't want a nice little hole right here in the middle. You want to encourage outward growth. You want to send it this way. Anything that's growing in, you want to take it out. These water sprouts here, we can utilize them for next year. Say I had to remove a huge limb in the middle, I'm going to use this for fruiting wood in three years. I have a plan for that limb. Understanding why he's going this way, I can utilize that. Um, and again, I left oxen on that tip. So what I can, when I can leave oxen in my tree, I'm going to find little water sprouts where I can actually utilize that, and that will help regulate the growth of the tree. Trees have what's called a tropism. They want to grow up. So again, all we're doing is combating upward growth. We don't want it. We want it to go sideways, laterally. Shooting for a 45 to 60 degree angle. Peach trees, stone fruits. Same concept, you want to take out your central lead, all back. It's encouraging that tropism of upwards growth. We want side lateral growth on this tree. Again, they bloom on first and third year. That's good, it's also bad, because if this got really super duper heavy, it's just gonna snap it out. So we make what's called thinning cuts. We wanna make less heading cuts and more thinning cuts to try to leave oxen in the tip of our limbs. We can prune that out. I, again, I will prune a lot of these out sometimes because I know it's just going to break. But that's where your, uh, your fruit pruning will and uh, culling will actually come into play. We'll touch on that later. So, on a piece, I'm going to show up to it, and most of them I show up to, I see a central lead. I don't want to see that. So, I'm going to take them out and start encouraging side lateral growth. Of course, if this was a tree, I mean, I'm going to come further down here because that's, central leaves are way bigger. Um, and remember, try to make that cut as close to, but not into, the branch collar of that tree. A lot of times you see cuts in trees and they're up here. A client will ask me to come bid their tree work or fruit tree pruning, and someone headed it back, and they don't realize what we have to do as arborists. We can't walk away from a job if it's not done rightly, but they don't understand that we're not going to leave all of these improper cuts. That is the enemy of fruit trees. So we have to go and fix all of these heading cuts that all died back in the tree, which means very expensive time consuming because now we have to try to fix all of it. It's not done with a chainsaw. Hand pruners, 
delicate, small little saws. This is one of my favorite little, oh, pocket boy, even it's a cute name. I use this thing so much. I mean, I can't tell you. So little pocket boys work very well. It's an expensive little hand saw. There, this one's about $65, has a medium tooth on it. I absolutely love this saw. And when I'm going first, that's kind of the first one I pull out when I show up to a fruit tree. I'll put the pruners down and say, okay, well, let's get the dirty work out of the way first. So I'm gonna go in there and say, okay, well, I'm gonna subordinate this thing all the way down into here. You can use the loppers for this. Uh, the biggest problem I have with loppers is I can't even get those things in until I use this thing first. So I pull out some mid primaries and then I spend time working the, uh, the exterior of the tree. Reason being, you don't want to waste all your time if you're going to lay, take it out anyway, so you blow all that out first and then start working your exterior of the tree. One thing that with the, these peach trees, they are, again, all these trees are very prolific growers, so you will find yourself happy to subordinate. Bring back in. Bring back in. Bring back in. Try to find a lateral when you can, and again, you're trying to find outward facing laterals. I'm going to beat this tree out, so I'm going to take all this stuff out of the middle. And this is just, this is one limb, this was not a tree, so I don't have the perfect structure I'm dealing with here. Take out your interior water sprouts, leave your exteriors heading out, and you're trying, eventually you are going to have yourself a tree without central leaves, beat out, upside down umbrella. That's what you're shooting for. A lot of times clients will call me and say, hey, I just planted a fruit tree, I need to prune it. Don't do it. Don't get all excited about your pruning. Leave your fruit tree alone for the first couple of years. The one thing you take out of a fruit tree or any, pretty much any tree when you first find it, dead, broken, and diseased. That's a very important thing. Dead, broken, and diseased. Always get that out of the tree. And still kind of keeping that one third. So when they come up, when it's, you come to a fresh tree that's been planted like any of these years, people are going to call me, oh, we need to prune. Like, no, you don't. Leaves are the food facts of the tree. That tree needs to establish. It's not so big that he's not that he's going to who's gonna break his limb. So we're not really worried about it. We're gonna leave him alone. So once he establishes, I'm gonna come in and do his first structural prune and get the footwork set. That's the biggest thing, get your footwork set. Um, start, whether it be a stone fruit or a palm fruit, it doesn't really matter. Um, but that's the biggest concept I can tell people, remember, do not exceed 25, 30%. Open up the interior, blow out your central lead, get the tree moving outwards, encourage stuff going outwards. Do not subordinate all of your oxen. Leave some on there. Because apple trees, every year they, they will do this. They'll shoot up to the sky. So we have to come in and get them smaller. Can you put that plum over there real quick? Now plum, it's another stone fruit. It has a pit in the middle. The cracked one? Yeah, the dark one, dark frog. It's actually a pluot, a plum and an apricot. Boy, are they tasty. My wife really, really wanted me to have this tree. Her grandfather had one in California. Um, unfortunately, it freezes a lot, but I end up uh, every few years, I get, I, every year I get a couple pieces of fruit out of it. So plums are like a scary beast to deal with. Out of all fruit trees that we deal with, I see this one destroyed the most because no one really knows where to start. It's like a maze. You're like, uh, okay, what do I do here? So again, being a stone fruit, it blooms on first and third year wood, which means it will produce fruit up here. It can. That's bad again because it's high we can't reach it too will snap and it'll break now on a tree like this I'll definitely employ your services on that one so if you can hold that and then I'll take these this this is pretend this is our tree even though this was just one limb out of this big old clue on so I'm gonna come take him out looking better already all right then we're gonna come and take this one out. And plum wood's definitely a lot harder than apple or pear. Um, and now we have a problem, our tree is too tall. Well, the first thing that everyone always does, they're like, hey, 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 gotcha, no, all wrong. Do not cut right there. That is the enemy of tree people. We're like, how, what are you supposed to do with that? I can't do anything. One is going to die because it does not have one third lateral. Okay, the rule of one third refers to pruning as well too. If you take off a limb, its next buddy has to be one third the diameter of the size of the one next to it. Because it is big enough to assume apical dominance, and this one will not die. Mm -hmm. So understanding why, uh, what we're trying to subordinate this tree down into, I don't want them to be so tall. So I'm going to start bringing them down into these buds in here. So I have these nice little fruity buds in here. What's nice about these cuts here 
is they have lateral buds and they're not going to sprout that field. Which is room that trees get on top? That's worthless, terrible, someone just destroyed a tree. Every time you see that. I don't like this big one right here. I'm going to take them down into here. And crowning and corrective pruning takes a long time. Whenever people always tell me, says, Johnny, why when I get tree bids, they are literally like this. I'm like, there's one very important thing to know about tree companies. Are they a certified arborist? Reputation? How long they've been in business? Detailed estimate on what they're about to do. Not just prune the fruit tree or this and that. You know, understand crowning. When I write up a bid, I'll say, crown to reduce height. Prune fruit trees. Crown to reduce overall size. Percentage wise, this is what we're going for. Again, a lot of people come in, boom, and they walk away. 15 minutes. I spent a lot of time on fruit trees. So I want to keep on subordinating this tree because he was allowed to get too big. It was my tree. I was lazy that year. <laughs> that backyard lazy gardener, I think they saw me and they're like, oh yeah, that's, that's good. So we don't want anything too close together either. There's a rule of six inches. You're trying to keep things, you know, they want everything, your scalpel would be six inches apart. Don't overthink the measurements. They're, they're tricks. They do what they want. Don't overthink that. And this one's really bothering me, so I'm taking it off. That's improper. Remember that? It's improper. So I am now, look how much shorter I am. I didn't make any heading cuts on this. I mean, technically that's somewhat of a heading cut, but it's not a heading cut. It's not going to sprout it for me. I want my tree to stay small. So I don't come in and chop here. I spend a lot of time and make hundreds of little cuts to subordinate a tree. This is in crowning a tree, if I did a shade tree, I'm going to do it the same way. With fruit trees, that concept I stick to. It makes sense. It works depending on the tree you're dealing with. Palm fruits, not so much. When I'm dealing with the plums, definitely. Um, but this is how you're going to subordinate a tree. You're going to open that back up there and don't be afraid to leave a couple of these. Again, this one could start heading out this direction because they chase sunlight. So I can also maybe utilize him in the future. If I take all of off, again, I took oxen out. I want to leave some oxen in the tips, subordinate when I absolutely have to. Always try to go for more thinning cuts, less heading cuts. That's what you're trying to do. If you do it every year, you don't have to worry about destroying the tree. Um, thank you very much for this. Just really quickly, let's touch on cherry trees, which I don't have a cherry over there, but this is a cherry tree. So, big thing when you find trees in nurseries. See all these cuts here? That's to stimulate growth. They subordinated oxen, so what's this plant gonna do? They wanted to thicken this tree up. This is what all nurseries do to create a bigger stock for you to come by and look more impressive. If we didn't do that, it has spindly looking trees, you know, so we put root stimulators, we want to, uh, to help take the oxen out to explode some more growth, so they're gonna go ahead and do this, and it's all fine. This is what they do out of nurseries. But if I'm gonna show up to your property, one, I'm not gonna touch this tree for a while until it establishes. I want that tree to be in the ground two, three years, depending on the establishment rate of that tree. But I'm gonna show up, and again, I'm gonna blow this out. The reason I wanna do it sooner than later is you don't want big, gaping wounds in trees because they do not compartmentalize. Compartmentalization is, uh, is coated, sealing itself off. You don't want a whole bunch of open wounds. It's a vector for everything to get inside. You do not want that. So the sooner, the better. Too soon, not good. Too late, not good. Um, and again, our company, we're a phone call away. If you have questions on this, we do a lot of it. We are in a peak season right now for fruit, for fruit tree pruning. We're doing a boatload of this. This tree here, though, again, very, cherries. If you want a late, to be a lazy backyard gardener, <laughs> best tree in the world. This tree hardly needs any pruning at all. It hardly grows. They don't grow that much. They're not prolific growers. The biggest problem is, good luck getting them. The birds love them, too. <laughs> I, I mean, I've been farming my whole life, and I, I think maybe I can experience two years out of 20 that we actually got cherry trees off our cherry trees and the birds didn't get them. So, best of luck, um, but gorgeous, gorgeous trees. And I have some clients, I don't know why, I hate them. They get them every year almost. And I'm like, oh God, how do you do this? Microclimates. They are microclimates in this town. That's why we have old fruit orchards scattered throughout here. And they work great. Cherries, though, they're very much hitting this in a lot of work. Um, so guys, I want to recap, palm fruits, apples and pears, second, third year wood, identify that where it's at, stone fruits, first, second, third year growth, that's where they set their fruit on that. Never take more than 25 to 30%. That rule stands for pretty much everything, every pruning practice, we want to tell you that for shade tree or fruit tree. 
The reason it's kind of important to really remember with, with the, these fruit trees, though, is you'll never catch up to them after you exceed that, that number. They'll just take off like crazy on you. You don't want that. Um, but yeah, for, for uh, all intents and purposes, try to prune every year. It makes it easier on you or call us and we'll and we say we'll do that. We do actually uh, do fruit pruning classes sometimes for our clients. They'll show up, they'll watch one of us sit there, do that, and hey, I can do that now. Don't be afraid to pick up the loppers or the hand pruners though. Remember correct cuts. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Getting on a more sensitive subject here. Uh, Cost for pruning trees. I know you guys see you on TV all the time. Do you, know, do you have like an average price for pruning uh, like say five peach trees and one apple tree? Uh, there's no per tree price. I, I've told people, I've just made it as much as $75 on a tree. I've made as much as $7,000 on one tree. That's the huge variation. I mean, this is pruning removal, stuff like that. So there's no per tree price. I look at a tree, if it's been taken care of, I actually went over to uh, do a fruit tree pruning job. I was very pleasantly surprised. She had improved from the previous year, and the guy did previously did a good job. I was blown away. I said, who did this? Oh, he's no longer in town. I'm like, okay. He said, he wasn't a company. I think it's just a guy who knew fruit tree. I'm like, okay, well, he did. Good job. And they were small, and they were pruned every year, so I could do all those really fast. I did like, what was it? Six fruit trees for her for like $375. You know, but they were in great condition. They were small. Um, and I could you know, just pop everything out for it and everything else. And I was I like fruit, so I actually did the job myself on it. Um, and they were small. But then I've come in that there's this one apple tree. Um, what did it come in at? Uh, he missed two or three years. We did it previously for him. Um, I think that tree alone was like 875 for this one tree, it was big. But he left it alone for three years, and it was just this dense map that we had to go through and take this stuff. I was like, dude, and it's scary. Again, I told him, I can't exceed this rule, otherwise I start this all over again. So call sooner or do pruning more frequently. Don't wait and think it's gonna behoove you the next year. It will not. Having fruit trees is like having kids. They take a lot of work. Uh, so, all right, yes. You probably have wars in it if the dog, if the bark has gone discolored, means your cameo layer is dead underneath. So her question was: There's a peach tree, dark bark on it, old decline. More than likely has peach bore in it. Then it definitely has peach bore. Yes. Um, a lot of those can be. You can actually drill in there. Wherever the, where the wound is, you can go in there, and sometimes you can pull that insect back out of there. You, if you find it. Yeah, and they squish your fingers down. Uh, yes? Um, I just want to say something about you and your company. I know you don't remember me. However, your company did a lot of work in my yard and some landscaping. My husband got ill a year and a half ago. Um, I had called your company up and say I could no longer continue you. I want to talk to you about your kindness. Okay. You guys came out the next month and finished up what you had to do in my yard, okay? You even came out and winterized it for me later in the year and you would not charge me. Well, thank you for that. I very much I very much like to speak to you after too. So I, again, I'm sorry for your loss in that situation. Yes, sir. My plum makes great fruit. It's about 20 years old. The bark is splitting on the bottom at, at the trunk. Is it too late to do anything with that tree? I need to look at it before I can make a determination. I do tell people a lot. Fruit trees, we designed them. We have made these things very vigorous growers. They can survive insect attacks, damage. They can literally produce some of the best fruit with one third of its cambio layer left on the tree. So if I look at it, say yes, we can actually bring this back from the brink. A lot of times they show up on jobs, there are definitely other issues at stake. I've dealt with bad watering locations, I've dealt with trees too deep in the ground. Um, there's certain things you can do to help your trees along. There's a really old technique that I really love because again, it goes back to my laziness. <laughs> Um, you ever remember, remember walking on the orchard and seeing all their trunks painted white? Yes. I like that for stone fruits. 
Because where do they go? Right down there by your structural roots that they're coming in. That's where they're going in. I tell a lot of my clients, please pull that away, go get a little quart of white latex paint, and if you want to look beautiful, put a piece of white, a piece of tape on the top of it and paint to that, go about 18, 24 inches up. You have fruit borers in your peach tree. I tell people they're everywhere. And it's the biggest problem we have with peach trees is yes, fruit borers. Um, painting the trunk is a very basic way. The reason is it's done by overpausing or boring. If you have a latex paint, it's like running into a rubber tire. Don't, I can't make it through, you know? So like, okay, so it definitely does help. Dormant oil sprays help as well too. And say, I do send a lot of people over here because I love their products because they're multi organic botanical based. They're safe to use. They're not gonna hurt yourself and you can use them in your organic garden. I love the dormant oil sprays. It does go ahead and coat those eggs in there. It does help um, the, the uh, systemics uh, for a lot of your shade trees and plant, it works very well. But that's a big thing with, with fruit trees. It's you're trying to do more manual control with these because you're eating fruit off them. And that's another reason I do like to you know, push through a fungal water because I like their product. It's safe and you can use it and everyone can use that. But definitely um, with the bores, painting the trunk up definitely does help on that. Any other questions? Uh, so yeah, leave it there. Um, I have a um, uh, 12 year old She, she was shocked at a tree that never produced fruit, and when a sapling came up, that bore, bore flowers as well too, still in the, um, from the plum family, that tree was finally able to produce. Self-pollinating. Yes? Our neighbor, where we came from, had a crab apple tree that was beautiful and produced a lot of fruit. Then they moved the regular apple tree near it, and that tree produced beautiful apples the first year. The second year, every single apple when there was a crab apple. Hit and miss, I mean, being crab apples, they're generally just ornamentals, but being fruit bearing, again, those are definitely hit and miss. Um, yes, yes. <laughs> um, well, I'll say, when you first plant a tree, I always get people like, when you first plant a tree, understanding where your root zone is. Follow your root zone, because be generally dictated by your drip edge of your tree. When you first plant a tree, your fruit tree, you're gonna put the irrigation right where that root ball is, because that's where your roots are at. Next year, you're going to move them back a little bit because you want roots to chase water. You're trying to keep water off the stem. Again, with these fruit borers, you're trying to keep their environment dry. They like it moist, they like to go live in there. So try to keep the water away from the stem. Follow the drip edge of the tree is kind of a go-to rule. The drip edge is where your last limbs in, out to here. So that's where you're gonna try to follow. Um, don't have to take it literally. People are like, oh, it's over to here. Don't take it literally. Just don't be right on your stem. So primary functions of roots, anchorage, storage, absorption, and conduction. If we have a small root system, that tree is limited to what it can actually do, survive. Um, if you're building stores in the system, he has a good platform, that's what we're trying to build. If we water here, trees, all trees, almost all 65% of them are root bound from the nursery because they've been living in a pot. So our job is to start it up, put it in the ground, have them chase the water. If we keep it right here, why would they go anywhere else? And they sit there and do circles. I've walked into so many fruit trees, my client's like, it's been that way for 15 years. And I'm all like, well, shake its hand. Oh, yeah, look at the ground. Exact same circle as when it came in. I mean, that's a root bound tree. Remember that, that is a really cool thing that you can always test your tree's health. I call it shaking its hand. Rock it back and forth. If in the first three years, if it's still making that circle down below, like the pot size came in, you got problems. It should have broken out of that. 
So don't waste a lot of time and energy on a tree that's root bound. Understanding watering properly out with a drip, following your drip edge a little bit definitely helps. Just don't water right at the base. Yes? Uh, no, the question was pruning fruitless trees or uh, ornamental uh, trees. No, you, you would not prune an ornamental tree like you would prune a fruit bearing tree. Um, because they're not bearing, they're not supposed to be bearing fruit. So you're, you're not trying to create a bumper crop of fruit. The reason we prune is to create bigger, healthier fruit. Same as a, as a concept of the big pumpkin at the 4th of July Fair. How do we get that thing? Well, we subordinated everything else off. All energy goes to one, and fourth, we have bigger, sweeter fruit. Um, which I want to follow up with that was the fruit pruning. So many of our clients call in, my tree is breaking, get here now. Well, I wished it worked that way, it doesn't. Fruit pruning, very important. We'll prune your tree, and I tell people, you're still gonna have too much. Remember, go in, try to prune the ones off the top. So you're gonna have fruit hanging down low on the underside of a branch, that's strong fruit. Ones on the side, one on the top. If you can go and alleviate, take these fruit trees and start pulling them off like this. Try to move along even the branch. Don't pull them off all one area, because that's bad weight distribution. If it's closer, try to leave it. Out here in the tips, maybe take a little bit more. Go for the ones that are higher up here. That's where you're going to save the fruit, because those ones on the top, when they get heavier, they start to twist, and then they just fall off naturally off the tree. So try to do your fruit tree pruning off the top limits. Yes, ma'am? I have a red plum, or I'm sorry, a red pear tree in this house that we bought. I'm guessing it's been there for at least 15, 16 years. Every tree in this yard has one water at the base. This is the only one I really care about. The other. But if I move this water out to the drip line where it should be, is this tree going to go into shock? Uh, no, not at all. So the question was, when you have a mature tree, you have one emitter at the base of the tree, she's concerned that the roots are only there and cannot move out from there. No, the tree roots are other places. They are. So a big thing that we offer is irrigation tech. We send them out. He updates your system. He'll tell you everything you need to know about that tree, where to put them, the gallons per hour, all that stuff. You will. That tree will not go into shock. If it did, it's root bound. The only thing we're going to do is to give it more. Is what we're going to do. But just stop watering at the base, water out to the edge. And it's a service that we offer because it's a big problem. When I'm doing consultations, I show up. One emitter at the base of the tree. Why is my tree dying? Okay. Well. We need, some, we need a little more water here, and then they call our office, hey, send your irrigation tech out, let's update this system. And some people don't even know the systems aren't even working you know, until we show up. So it's a big thing. Summertime's coming, water. We're getting hotter, make sure we're watering. And that was, should, everyone should be getting their fertilizer today and getting ready to get that in the ground as well, too. Where should they buy their fertilizer from? I know, I like this place called Water's Garden Center. <laughs> Have you heard about it? <laughs> so, Johnny, I've interviewed him on the radio, and he is, you know, I give him 10 minutes, a solid segment. And it's hard to slow him down enough to get to, to slow the information down. So he could do this all day long. If you, you, you don't mind, maybe you could hang out for just a few minutes. Oh, definitely. It's those that could, yeah. didn't have time to have questions or whatever. You could kind of go there. Maybe we'll take these branches and get them out of the way so we're trip hazards. <laughs> but the parking lot is clogged. Customers are coming in and going, oh my gosh, and leaving. So I'm going to cut it off <laughs> so we can make some plant sales. But... There's two types of food down there, all-purpose plant food. That one I made 20 years ago for evergreens. Flowering like lilacs, that kind of stuff. Now, since the economy's back, or I think it happened about when the economy tanked, fruit trees just became a huge interest. I don't know if that's the edibles, I mean, herbs, vegetables, everything just quadrupled in size, volume-wise. So there's this organic trend. Millennials are big, they're having kids, they want safe, their organic's a big thing for them. And so we created a organic fruit and vegetable food, basically. 100% organic, but it's pelletized. So organics are really complicated to use. So put the recipe together, pelletize it so it's easier to spread. So that was a 644 mix. So he said, just telling you which one for fruit tree folks, that's the one you want to use. It says 6447, because 7% of it's calcium. So that's what brings out the flavor uh, the fragrance of, of flowers, that kind of stuff. So there's two down there. If you're fertilizing, now's a good time to fertilize. Go for it. It's not now by the end of March at least. Fertilize everything, uh, especially fruit trees. But with that, why don't we give it up for Michelle and Jennifer? If you need something, bigger jobs, talk to him. He's got his material back there. Please hang out. 
and get these these branches out of the way. Thanks, folks. Thank you.